My name is Jamie Godoyo, and I am a residential counselor and case manager at One Hope United Centralia, Illinois campus. Tonight, as we reflect on One Hope United's legacy of life without limits, I want to share just one example of how I've seen this mission lived out in my own work. In the spring of 2019, a young lady that we will call Corey was admitted to One Hope United's residential facility in Centralia, Illinois. Her trauma history was extensive. Her default for months was to express suicidal ideations in order to be psychiatrically hospitalized. The Wilson Home Team, a team that provides daily living skills, group therapy, counseling, and other treatments to female youth 14 to 18 years old, worked with Corey to help provide some structure and extra individualized time. By Christmas, Corey was really thriving. She was responding well to treatment and was even allowed to get a local job. Part of Corey's struggle, though, was connected to her lack of relationship with her biological father. Corey's father was ordered to have no contact with her at a very young age, and despite knowing that he was a registered sex offender, she continued to express to One Hope United staff and her caseworker that she wanted to have contact with him. On February 26th, Corey left her workplace and One Hope United staff reported her missing that evening. It turned out that Corey had been in contact with her father via social media. He provided her with a bus ticket to his home in Pennsylvania sometime shortly after was when she was reported missing. No one heard from Corey until March 7th, when she reached out to a member of the Wilson Home Clinical team via Facebook Messenger. During this conversation, she said she had been sexually and physically assaulted and she did not feel safe. The One Hope United staff member that received this message reached out to a supervisor and the police were contacted. I was also notified and felt it was necessary to get her back to One Hope United as soon as possible. Within about an hour, the police had Corey in custody and were contacting the local child protection unit. The police also took Corey's biological father into custody. Corey stayed in the emergency room of the local hospital until she was transferred to a psychiatric placement on March 20th. Throughout the month, multiple conversations occurred and all travel plans continued to be placed on hold due to the COVID-19 outbreak. As part of the Wilson Home Clinical team, I was adamant that she needed to return to us and asked almost daily when this could occur. I talked with her frequently by phone and did some counseling with her during this time. On March 31st, we had a lengthy phone conversation with all the necessary people involved. After the call and approval was given, I worked with Corey's caseworker and got on a plane to Pennsylvania the next day. On April 1st, I met Corey at the Philadelphia airport. Corey immediately started to cry and I just gave her a big hug. Corey's been back at One Hope United Residential for a few weeks now, and it's going to be a long road for her, but she's expressed that she feels safe and she feels like her team at One Hope United really cares about her. This experience was one of the most memorable of my nearly 10 years at One Hope United. Reflecting on this experience now, I think it demonstrates how all of us at One Hope United want the kids we serve to have a life without limits. I also think it demonstrates how we genuinely care about our kids and their well-being and will do what we believe is right to make sure that they feel protected and safe.